Hello, and welcome back to the Play It Forward podcast presented by Peace Players, the podcast where we lift up voices and stories of people working in their communities and networks to promote peace and equity. My name is Chenny Nwagwa, and I'm your host. As you always know, I'm thrilled and excited to be here. We have a very special guest joining us from all the way across the waters, and he is going to impart some grand wisdom upon us. Uh, and we're going to leave feeling rejuvenated and just happy overall about mm -hmm. his mission and his desire to do phenomenal things around the world. Uh, but before we do that, of course, I've got to introduce my most amazing, handsome, genius co-host, Emmett Shepard. Oh, Ginny, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it's the Neutrogena yeah. in the yeah. face. That's what the, that's the <laughs> secret. If, if you people are listening at home, it's the Neutrogena in the morning and in the afternoon. That's how you get this. You know, <laughs> this doesn't happen overnight. It's years of practice. Um, hello, <laughs> listeners. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. I hope you're having a wonderful day, Absolutely. evening, afternoon. Mm. Um, my name is Emmett Shepard. I'm the coordinator and co-host of the beautiful an incredibly talented Chini Nuagbo. And so Chini, I, I'm pretty excited about our guest today because, you know, he's he's had a life already and he's still got a lot more life left in him. And uh -huh. I'm, I'm really excited to get dive deep into his life and his journey. So let the people know who we're talking to today. Absolutely. So our guest today has been a part of Peace Flayers for about around 15 years, I'd say. He's a former member of the Ireland rugby team turned solicitor. And for uh, our American listeners around the world, that's just another way, a fancy way of saying uh, lawyer. Mm -hmm. He accepted the 2007 Espy Arthur Ashe Courage Award on behalf of peace players and has done so much more to promote peace in his home of Northern Ireland. Please help me welcome Mr. Trevor Ringland. Woohoo! Mm. Welcome, Thank Trevor. You. Welcome. Thank you so much Thanks for being here. Evan. Lovely to talk to you. Uh, thanks for inviting me on. I'm delighted to talk with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Trevor, there's this thing we do at the beginning of the show. I don't know if you've heard um, in the streets of Ireland or not, but basically, <laughs> uh, I'm known as the uh, icebreaker king. <laughs> he is. He okay. is. And so okay. we like to do an icebreaker before we start any sort of deep conversation that we have, just as a way to, to get that exhale in before we dive deep. And uh, I'm going to ask you the icebreaker today, if that's all right with you. Okay, go ahead. All right. <laughs> so imagine you can have a billboard that millions of people see every day on their commute to work, yeah. commute home, anything like that. What, what, is, uh, what is said on your billboard? What would you put on your billboard that millions of people could see? Love this question. Love it. I think, uh, I mean, I'd, I'd put something very simple uh, because I do believe in it. And mm -hmm. that is friendship works. Ah, oh, that's nice. That's strong. Now, when, like you say, when you say I, simple, are you thinking like aesthetic is just black and white? What's the aesthetic looking like? Just, just put it up there and just say friendship works. And you, you could add, <laughs> try it. But, uh, but just leave it as a concept. And, uh, and uh, there's so many places in the world where, um, you know, there, there, has to, there has to be a, con a, a counter to conflict. And if right. there's a counter to that, right. it's people building relationships. Uh, and yeah. it's so important in the world that while those lead us into conflict, do what they do, then there also has to be that counter dynamic, which is those who actually heal the wounds, build the relationships, and create the sort of societies that uh, do well, both so socially and economically. And mm -hmm. it's yeah. so important in the world that, that that there is always that counter dynamic to those that lead us into conflict. And that's the experience yeah. we have here. And we see it all over the place. And, yeah. you know, and, and so I think that simple term encapsulates that. Yeah. Friendship works, people. Yeah, friendship does. works. And I can, um, I can see why that, uh, um, why you would love peace players, right? Uh, you talked about mm -hmm. conflict and one of the key things that we do is we uh, equip uh, youth to mitigate, with tools to mitigate conflict, right? Um, conflict doesn't have to be the way. Uh, friendship yeah. works, right? <laughs> you can, it does, yeah, no, you can no, be no. friends with somebody, right? Who doesn't yeah. look like you, who doesn't think like you, who doesn't have the same religion as you. You can, you can be friends with these people. You can expand uh, beyond yourself. So that's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah, yeah, it's a great billboard. So, you know, Trevor, uh, rightly so, as we just heard, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show. And you're going to be having a lot more drop the mic moments throughout the show, as we can tell. Um, and our producer, Life, 
um, former fellow with Peace Players Northern Ireland, has told us a lot about you. Me and Chinny have luckily done some research about you, we promise. Um, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so before we dive into, you know, about Great. you and, and your journey, um, let, let the listeners know, um, because when I came, went to Belfast in 2017, I had seen a few movies like In the Name of the Father and 71 and these things and had a, a, a rough idea of sort of the history of the historical conflict in Northern Ireland and have heard of these buzzwords like the Troubles and stuff like that, but didn't really have a strong understanding of what that was. Um, and so tell our, give, give, give our listeners sort of a bird's eye view, so to speak, of what that uh, historical conflict was. Well, I, I, I suppose in terms of, um, I say that, you know, we have a history where we've got relationships wrong. There's a diversity on the island and it's a failure to build the sort of inclusion in the society that we have in this island that has, has fed a conflict as well as those who take hatred to a different level where they decide to use conflict to overcome what would in effect a constitutional preference. And so a hundred years ago, this island uh, divided, uh, part of the island stayed part of the United Kingdom and another part of the island decided to leave. And uh, there was, in my view, a, a constitutional way of achieving that separation, but violence came into the mix of it. And it's it's sort of been a, 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 a it's been a, a difficult factor to uh, overcome ever since and it mm -hmm. set relationships down a path that uh, that in my way in my view was was unnecessary and <clears throat> it's caused problems ever since and as I'll maybe talk about later I think that the key to the future is if we got relationships wrong in the last hundred years then let's make sure we get them right in the next hundred and the way to do that is is for all of us to look in the mirror and say right you know, if hatred defined us in the last century, then let's make sure friendship and building relationships defined right. us in the next century. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the strange things is that while the island of Ireland was dividing, I ended up playing on a, a, in a sport that had an all-Ireland team, the Irish rugby team. And so 100 years ago, the island is dividing. But while the island was dividing and with violence being at, at, at the heart of that, and uh, the Irish rugby team continued to play. Yeah, that's, we yeah, had that's so interesting. a team representing all the people of the island playing together no. against yeah. countries like France and England. Um, but yet this, you had this counter dynamic also, which was the use of violence. And once you use violence, it's really, really difficult to undo the consequences of that. And that's, that's what we're working our way through at this moment in time. Mm -hmm. um, we had a further period of violence that broke out. Um, in the late 60s and lasted for 30 years and again did wow. tremendous damage to our society. I think there were genuine issues that um, in our society that needed to be tackled, um, certain civil rights issues, um, but the way to tackle them was not through violence and ultimately you, we can reflect back and recognize that, that nothing was achieved through violence that could not otherwise have been achieved through peaceful means. Right. Yeah, exactly. But once the violence started, and the one, if one side uses violence, then the extremes on the other side use violence. Um, but at the same time, there's always that group of people in the middle who are trying to undo the damage of the violence and trying to prevent it from happening. And so I, we got it wrong in yeah. the last century. And uh, I, I think that we are working our way through things. We reached an agreement in 1998, and I think uh, we're actually starting to get things right, and we're starting to focus on those things that, that bind us together. Yeah. Um, and whatever constitutional preference you, you might have for here, the only way to pursue it is by making the place work, socially and economically, yeah. great relations across the island and between uh, this island and the rest of the United Kingdom. Uh, you know, and I think as we look to the future, one of the things we should do is, is value each other's children as if they are our own and look after them in the way that you would look after your own children. And mm -hmm. those aren't, yeah. that's a pretty good basis in which to work through things. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think also, you know, that's such a good point to hit on. As you said earlier, you know, violence is fought with violence a lot of the time. And I think historically yeah. speaking, 
human beings have always decided to do that sort of fire with fire mentality exactly in in a historical context um and so you say there's this it's a hundred years ago the island splits sort of and then there's this concentrated period from the late 60s uh for 30 years starting in the late 60s going for about 30 years uh and that is sort of the umbrella of the troubles so to speak if i'm not mistaken and so I just want to get sort of your more personal uh, on, on your side of things of what, what was that like sort of how did that, you know, impact you growing up? What was it like growing up for you as a kid in Northern Ireland sort of during that time? Well, I, I go back to the, the, the 60s when there was no violence and, and we lived in, a, in the main city in Northern Ireland called Belfast. And my father was a police officer. And so... Um, and we lived in an area in, in those sixties where it was really broke down in the, in, the, in the area. The violence was was pretty significant in the area in which we lived. But during the period in which we lived in it, uh, it was absolutely fine, and people got on fine. Our neighbours were just neighbours, and right. we left just before the the troubles broke out, and we went to live in a police station um, down in the glens of Antrim, and mm-hmm. there. Uh, the violence then broke out and, and our lives changed then for the next 30 years. And right. you went from a situation where there was no violence at all and relatively peaceful to suddenly there was very significant violence occurring. And right. my father, if as a, every police officer, if you can imagine this, uh, for 30 years, you every morning you had to check under your car to make sure it wasn't booby trapped. Wow. Every time wow. you opened the door, wow. yeah, you had to check that uh, it was safe uh, when you opened the door at night and when you went to work it got even more dangerous and and as a police family we were in the middle in some respects uh, if there was two communities involved in conflict we were nearly a third community and at you know one occasion that I, I talked about in the past is my father uh, left a police station in Belfast in the mid 70s and he came under attack from the Irish Republican Army, which was um, the nationalist side of things. And there's a two hour gun battle, leaving him stuck under a car for a period outside the police station. Mm. And meanwhile, in the town that we lived in, um, my mother got a phone call at the same time from the local police station to say to say that um, essentially that uh, that the other side were burning policemen out of their houses wow. in, in our hometown. So you, you, you had that situation. You had that situation that was going on then. And it, uh, it continued on for 30 years. And my father attended some terrible scenes, some, some terrible things. Um, but the police uh, worked their best as they could to try and maintain law and order here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, they knew every day who might be trying to kill them, uh, but right. they, they generally work through through the the processes of the justice system uh, to try and deal with those issues. Right. You, sorry, Jenny, I want to add one more thing. Before yes, you please, jump in. please. Go but ahead. It, it's funny because I think listeners listening right now, you know, you say the word thirty years, and it, it it's it, it's just a number to a lot of people, yeah, but yeah, I don't think yeah. people understand the scale of that of like how long right. thirty years is. For me personally, was there ever that I'm just curious about? growing up was there ever a sense of like uh in a sort of sick twisted way a sense of normalcy did you did did was there a common feeling around the community that this is never going to end kind of or was it always constantly like trying to figure out how to stop this thing i think everybody was constantly trying to find a way of stopping it and Mm -hmm. they said once once you choose conflict it is very hard to bring it to an end and when it is brought to a a sort of end it's it's continues to be difficult to to try and undo the consequences of that conflict but all the time there were those feeding the conflict there were also those working against it right. and so it is to the credit of the people here and the, what i call the true character of the people here that they were always working against it and so there was always that counter to those the men of violence and the men and women of violence and um and and those are the sort of things you drew upon and you did find a way of 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 living with what was a very abnormal situation, but uh, you find a way of getting on with things and mm-hmm. people find a way of con- continuing to try and get on with 
with normal lives, but it divided up our society and, and part of the work that peace players are involved in or the main part of the work is trying in those most divided areas to try and give children the opportunity to meet each other and become yeah. friends and create the sort yeah. of relationships that we all value. Yeah. And and that, that work continues even though it's 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 so, some time ago. And yeah. uh, but there were events like the peace people um were you know, people did come together and every opportunity was created for the men of violence to take a different path. And yet they, they, they couldn't, they couldn't do that. And they continued yeah. it on. And as I said, unnecessarily, I, I just take a view that the violence here was unnecessary and unjustified, mm -hmm. but it happened and we have to work through the, the, the consequences of that. But what we did, you know, I went to university here and, and I, I stayed here and, and you did try to find a way of functioning, um, which people from outside of here would have seen as quite abnormal. But for us, it was it was relatively normal. But but there's a lot of hurt caused and uh, and a lot of tragedy. But um, but in 1998, we reached an agreement and said, right, we're we're not going to do this again. And mm -hmm. and we're working through that, and it's actually working. Um, it's not it's not always easy. Um, it takes a bit of careful management sometimes but uh but we are actually we have created a, a pretty normal society and mm. my kids have made their homes here having gone away initially to university and whatnot but they've come back here non and society now is transformed considerably economically it's doing well there's a lot of good stories here yeah and there are some really good examples of people who have faced up to those hatreds and faced down those hatreds and and they're the people who really have won the argument in in in, in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, go oh, ahead. go ahead, Jenny. No, no, no. Okay. I just have one more thing. But go for it. Go for it. I just want to say this um, uh, because you, both Emmett and Trevor, you guys have brought up uh, great points, right? It's it's um, violence as a constitutional preference is you know something that happens quite often. It's easier, right? Uh, and sometimes when you guys start yeah. to see the shifts and uh, and great things happen, a lot of times people just, like you said, Emmett, in a, a weird, uh, twisted way, try to hold on to the violence because it's what they know, right? <laughs> and there is right. this, um, there are peace players, you know, there are, there's this idea of things happening and evolving, but sometimes you just have that group of people who hold on uh, to, to, to that violence. But I, one thing I just want to point out is that I think it's amazing that sports um, have, yeah. you, you know, you guys came together on a sports team. Again, rugby, South Africa has the same uh, in terms yes, of just apartheid absolutely. and people coming yeah. together and rugby. Honestly, rugby, I didn't even know. It wasn't on my map yet, but, you know, it seems like it mm -hmm. has been changing lives all over the world. So I, I just love the fact that um, you mentioned briefly, and I know that Emma's going to dive deeper, but there's just a space because the story will evolve as we continue to talk. There's just a space in sports uh, that creates uh, a, a medium where you can leave all those acts of violence behind. You can leave all your uh, <laughs> uh, points it's, of contention behind you and just come together. It's brilliant. And, and you know, yeah, I've been out to Cyprus and see the work of peace players in the Middle East. And you see just how naturally you can bring young people together. And the, what, I, what I say peace players does is it, it creates the opportunity for people to show that they want something different. And so they, they buy into it, the parents buy into it, the teachers buy into it, members of the community support it. And, and what you do is you show a different future is possible. And we do that all around the world and in all the areas that we, we operate in. When I was, you know, I was fortunate enough, my, my um, you know, at school I played rugby as a sport and at university, it, it went on to a different stage and, and I managed to get onto the, the Irish rugby team and it represented the whole island and, and it was uh, it was the identities of Britishness and Irishness. It was able to promote a, an identity that was inclusive, which is so key mm -hmm. in any country that you're, 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 the identity of your country includes all the people who you are part of it. So you have, you know, you have Irish Americans, you've Italian Americans, but they're Americans, and yeah. their identity is, and it's constantly trying to create that sense of interdependence in the community that everybody's maybe different, but they have to find a way of working together so that society as a whole achieves and for for everybody's benefit. Yeah, no, it seems like there's a also an overarching theme that we've talked about, sort of of um, that idea of violence is very short term, 
uh, easy, the easier option in terms of solving a conflict and the peacemaking is much harder and, but it has a much more longevity to it as obviously. And sort of uh, before we take a quick, you know, exhale break, um, uh, I want to talk to you, Trevor, because I read this op-ed piece that you wrote called The Most Terrible Events in the Troubles Did Not Happen in Isolation. I don't know if you remember doing this um, or if this, if, if this article is even real and I just found a fake article that says <laughs> you wrote it. But um, I want to pull one quote specifically where it says, people want to justify using violence outside the law to pursue a constitutional objective would like us to commemorate separately. They want us to blame the other, to hate, to live separate lives, to keep walls up, and they want Northern Ireland to fall socially and economically. They will use these anniversaries to pursue those goals, and they will try to strip away context at every opportunity. Yeah. To counter this cynicism, we must never forget the broader picture of what was happening in this part of the world. And so, you know, the, these troubles are uh, 50th anniversary is almost here, kind of. And so there's a clear, deep understanding that we're worried about uh, not getting all the context out for future generations to clearly and uh, holistically understand what happened. And sort of uh, there is a tendency in not only just Northern Ireland, but in history around the world of, of making sure that there's blame to go separately to each side sort of, and not so much um, having a holistic approach to it. And it, uh, I'm curious sort of if you want to dive a little deeper into that quote and also sort of what fears do you have besides the um, lack of understanding holistically of what the troubles was for future generations, if any, moving forward? And we're going through, you, you know, over the next 30 years, we're going, th we're going through 30 years of 50th anniversaries. And mm -hmm. for many of those people, it's of terrible tragedies. And and what I've seen is, is certain very terrible events. They were absolutely terrible. But people see them as only what happened to them and don't put it in the wider context of what was going on. So mm -hmm. why were soldiers on our streets in Northern Ireland? Whenever right. In the 1960s, there were no soldiers in our streets. We didn't need them. Um, and I even asked my father, you know, when the troubles first broke out, could you have managed without the army? And he says, yes, he says, we might have been able to manage it, he says, but suddenly we were being attacked on both sides, as I explained earlier. And he says, once that happened, he says, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't handle it. And mm -hmm. we were facing a civil war. And you see again around the world the, where a civil war breaks out and the absolute trauma that that brings to any society, if you look at Syria and other places, and the massive damage that can be done when that happens. So young soldiers arrived on our streets and... My father wrote an interesting paper in the 70s as a police officer, the use of an army and in civil environment. And they're trained for the battlefield. They're not trained for the streets of a, a, a normal society. So mm -hmm. they made mistakes, which had sometimes terrible consequences for the people that were involved in those mistakes. But at the same time, the context was that they had to be here to stop a civil war from happening. And without them, the, the loss of life would have been far greater. The damage to our society would have been far greater. Mm -hmm. And so some people only see the, the hurt that was caused to them. And that, that's right. perfectly right. understandable. Some people only want them to see the hurt that was right. caused to them. And they hold them close instead of letting them recognize that, you know, the rest of us see the hurt that was caused to them as well. Mm -hmm. um, and But the rest of us, we have to look at the hurt that was caused to those families that suffered as a result of the army's actions but also all those families who suffered as a result of others' actions. The army were responsible and the police were responsible for 10% of the deaths here. The, the IRA, the Republican movement, they were involved in 60% of the deaths and the loyalists and were responsible for 30%. So the rest of us, what we have to do is care about all those people who suffered hurt. And that includes the young soldiers and the young police officers who gave their lives to try and hold, you know, keep, keep this place from deteriorating in the way it, it could have deteriorated mm -hmm. and 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 then recognize that when conflict breaks out terrible things just do happen they happen deliberately they happen by accident they happen nobody wants these things to happen but that's just what happens through but as we remember the the anniversaries then we need to put it in the context of what was going on at that time mm -hmm. and and for the vast majority of the rest of us, we have to constantly say we care about all our children, all our young people and all the people who suffered loss. And even 
even the 18 year old young man living in Belfast who ended up joining uh, a paramilitary organization and he spent 30 years in prison mm-hmm. you know, for, for murder. He, he did tremendous damage to a family in committing the murder to their loved one. But he also ended up in prison. And if we look at if I look at what I did between the ages of 18 and, and 36, I remember talking to a young Republican uh, paramilitary who had been in, in prison for that length of time and how I, my life developed during that period and how his life developed. And, mm-hmm. you know, I got married. I played rugby for Ireland. I developed my job. He ended up in prison for 18 years because wow. somebody shoved a gun into his hand and said, go and shoot that person. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so we need to keep those young people out of the hands of those who want to lead them into violence as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And yeah. we're doing it, but we're not doing it as well as we should be. And right. I think it needs leadership at the top. You know, we, uh, I think this Island, it, it, we, one thing we're not doing as well as we should is looking in the mirror and said, saying, we got it wrong. Let's right. get it right in the future. Right. And that's the real challenge that needs to go out to the people here. And that's what a true uh, leader does, right? They can look at yeah, themselves and yeah. say, you know, exactly. Well, maybe this the algorithm uh, that we've put together isn't 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 working right we got to make some adjustments so we got to look like what we say at peace players um that inside outside transformation go inside and make sure the lens that we're mm-hmm. using to really mm-hmm. view the conflict is correct and right. then look at how we've contributed to the con- conflict so i think um that's a very powerful statement from a leader right a leader knows when to reevaluate or do some self-reflection and really ask themselves are they contributing yeah. to uh, the solution or they're or are they adding to the conflict yeah, yeah. i think there's there's, there's there's great examples of way these problems have been overcome. That, that's the, the, the strength of here. That yeah. You can point to things and say, do you want to change that? Well, you can change that. And Peace yeah. Players is an example. The Northern Ireland soccer supporters are one of the best examples of a, a large organization of people who actually looked at themselves and challenged themselves. And the Northern Ireland football team um, in the late, late uh, 90s, early 2000s, they got into a really bad place, supporters-wise. Yeah. Very sectarian, very angry atmosphere. There were 5,000 people going to, to their big games. Yeah. And leadership from a young guy called Michael Boyd and Jim Rainey uh, were community relations officer appointed. And they said to the supporters, look, we need to change. And supporters themselves recognized the game they loved was being destroyed. And they said to themselves, we need to change. Some of the supporters tried to stop them. And they said, no we're going ahead without you mm-hmm. and they, they they looked in the mirror and they said we're sectarian we're we're horrible we're we're not uh we're not showing a very pretty face to the world here and we need to sh- we need to change and so they started to come up with ideas themselves and now for the matches you get twenty thousand people going to the games you have another ten thousand one tickets right. you have family friendly atmosphere they've been voted the best uh supporters in europe right. on a number of occasions and economically, it's transformed, and socially, it's transformed, and and so it's it's just, it's an example that if you really want to change the future, then it can be done. And what is yeah. frustrating is there's so many leaders that don't don't tap into that and still continue to push the divisive buttons. Um, Absolutely. So. Yeah, Emmett, and uh, we think... could we could talk about this for yeah. hours. Seriously, yes. me and Jenny yes. have so many questions, but let's take a right. let's take a quick exhale before we Absolutely. dive deeper into yes. that idea of what the future is going to hold for right. stuff like this. Um, yeah. Jenny, why don't you explain to Trevor, our good man Trevor, what the what the game is we're about so, to play? So, Trevor, you've made it this far. Welcome. Um, <laughs> we are going to do something we love to do with all our guests called the lightning round. Enter sound here. <laughs> and we're walking through a series of brilliant, amazing, masterful questions. Uh, And you'll have about three to about four seconds to answer those questions. Just joking, maybe three to Mm -hmm. 20 seconds to answer those questions. Uh, It's kind of like a rapid fire thing. Uh, It's fun. Uh, You'll enjoy yourself. And that's about it. I have, Emmett, I know you're going to ask me what I have. I have my pen. You got it. Okay, good. You got the clock? I have my paper ready (laughs) to go. So. And Trevor, don't worry. We'll judge you heavily on each answer. So just feel no pressure. I'm worried about this. (laughs) <laughs> no, no, don't be, don't be. Okay, if you could score a game winner, would you rather score at home or away? Oh, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, coffee or tea? Um, probably coffee at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mo- morning bird or night owl? 
Uh, a bit of both, actually. Uh, well, we, we have to pick ooh, one, sorry. Mm, gotta pick one. Oh, I'll, I'll go for uh, morning. Okay, okay good. Yes, I Cats or dogs? Dog. Yeah, a Labrador. <laughs> okay. Labrador. Yeah. Spring or yeah. autumn? Spring. I love spring. Nice. I love spring. I, I love, love spring. both, but I love spring too. Yeah, yeah, I love spring. Okay, bungee jumping or zip lining? Uh, probably zip lining. Uh, but I would do both. But okay, 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 okay. Space travel or deep sea travel? Uh, space travel or which? Deep sea travel. I love space travel. Okay. Oh, cool! Yeah, I like okay, the love okay. part in front of that. I okay. like that. I like that. Um, a million dollars or three wishes? Now the caveat here, Chinny, let him know. Is that you cannot ask for more wishes, nor can you ask for a million dollars. Um, I'd probably take three wishes. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been strong on the three wishes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Superhero or super villain? <laughs> oh, superhero, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I like the last. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for one guest to just like, be super like villain. super villain. And we'll be right. like, okay, now this right. episode's over. Um, right. Singing or dancing? Uh, singing. Singing. Ooh, oh, nice. Okay. Reading or writing? Uh, reading. Yeah. Nice. I like reading. Uh, reading. One person who inspires you, Trevor. Yeah. Um, I, I just say my wife, I suppose. Mm, oh, yeah. that's so nice. the wife. Shuts yeah. the wife. And then last one, one thing you want our listeners to remember from today. I think that um, the type of society you want to have just doesn't happen. It has to be constantly worked at. Um, yeah. If you don't, if you take your eye off the ball, it can deteriorate. Um, mm. And with that, Trevor. Yeah. yeah. You've made but the things I've learned, coming back to what I've learned from somebody, I meet, I'm very fortunate to meet some incredible people. Um, right. Right. Like yesterday I had lunch with a, a good friend, Jerry, and he, he lost his three nephews in, in the oh, Troubles. Wow. So, um, yeah. But for 30 years, he worked and worked and worked at, uh, at challenging people in, in one of the most difficult areas of Belfast. Mm. And, uh, and he just maintained that challenge. And, and he says now, it's, it's funny how many people come up to him and say, we wish, we'd listen, we'd wish we had listened to you years ago, Jerry. And, you know, and just that sustained effort. And yeah. I think that's the key to any society, that, that there are those people who just do sustain that effort over a long period of yeah. time. And we're a better place for it. So yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, with that being said, Emmett said that you uh, you've made it through the rounds. Thank you for going Completely. back and telling us that person that uh, you've learned from recently. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, we, we you took us through a journey of more of the um, just the troubles, right? The actual troubles, yeah. uh, literally yeah. and historically the troubles. And so now I want to move. Um, through that journey and how the power of sport uh, has been able to kind of shift uh, the narrative just a tad bit in a place where, you know, we have people like you advocating for a better uh, a society. And my, my, my first question is, and you touched about on this just a tad bit, uh, for the uninitiated, can you explain a little bit more about the importance of the relevance of the Ireland rugby team uh, in relation to the conflict? Just that positive side, that coming together uh, aspect. Well, it, it's 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 one of those things. The island divided, as, as I explained earlier, but yet in so many other ways we stayed together. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So there was always a there was always a different way of doing it, and always a different path to follow. And yet, for some reason, we kept following the the conflict path. And so rugby was just one really good example that this all Ireland rugby team. Uh, came together. We played against England, Wales, Scotland, and France, and other countries in the Southern Hemisphere. And you even have a British and Irish Lions team, which represents all these islands, and who played against the Southern Hemisphere. And so you have this thing that shows you that it can be done differently. And 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 why those polit politicians who pursue power choose the conflict route is is a matter that probably needs to challenge more often, um, um, because you have this other way. Of, of doing it and and I remember talking to an IRA man um, a former prisoner and we had a discussion and, and you know and he was trying to achieve a united Ireland and I, I said well what's the only method you've used to persuade me of the benefits of a united Ireland and, and that was violence 
And I said, buy me a pint of Guinness and we'll talk about it. <laughs> Don't shoot me. And yeah. And, yeah. and, and, t- and I'll tell you what was interesting. We, a group of us were meeting with the <laughs> former Republican prisoners. And as you can imagine, it was quite, you know, it was quite difficult, some of the conversations. But one night somebody said, what do we want for our children? And the atmosphere changed. Wow. And it really was, it turned into a far more con- constructive discussion. Yeah. What was also interesting was for one of the f- follow-up meetings, the ideologues came into the room, the political dynamic came into the room, and they closed the atmosphere down again uh, because those former prisoners felt they couldn't talk as freely as they previously talked with us. Yeah. And so it's, 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 um, so there's, there's, it, it's always looking at ways of doing things differently. And the rugby team, it was fantastic. During those times, you know, we had police officers and army officers playing on the rugby team. Mm. We had the Republic of Ireland's police force were protecting them, gave them 24 hour security and mm. they would have put their lives in the line for those guys. Yeah. yeah. I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No. And, you know, there was a bomb that three of my friends were caught up in and, and nearly killed it, that oh. murdered a, a judge, Lord Justice Gibson, a lovely man and, and his wife, Cecilia. And the bomb was set off that blew their car across the road into the car that um, into the car that my friends were in and nearly killed the three of them. And one of them never played international rugby a- uh. again. And, uh, and the thing that was enabled us to go on and play in the World Cup for Ireland was that we had that friendship to fall back upon. Right. That previous, right. that other experience of, of, of good relations. And, yeah. and, uh, and so that's what rugby, but it wasn't just rugby, it was hockey, field hockey. Soccer. Um, it was I mean, a whole soccer. range golf. Um, yeah. Oh, and, interesting. And, and we have a sort of identity that, uh, we have a sort of identity that that, that we can mix and match. We, we're Irish, we're British, we're Northern Irish. Um, and rugby was able to accommodate those those those, those different identities. Um, Very cool. Bring it out. Yeah. And golfer, you know, we have the likes of Roy McIlroy. <laughs> Um, my daughter okay. was still with Roy McElroy, <laughs> and right. uh, and they're, they they and my daughter's husband they were all friends. And, yeah, wow. and yeah, he's nice. a great ambassador for here. And, yeah, you know, he's probably a sports envoy as well. Um, mm-hmm. Very cool. Have you played? Have you played Rory in golf or no? I don't think no. <laughs> you would know. You would know. I would know. Okay. I would know. Yeah, he, yeah exactly. He, he did actually, I asked him one tip, but he, he actually in fairness to me, sorted it out. I was I was putting the ball away out to the right, and I said, what do I do about this? I was at the driving range one night, and he was there, and he gave me a tip, and that, that sorted it out. So yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, very nice. So, you know, it's always nice to have a and The goats give you pocket. tips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Um, but all the great uh, things since then, but uh, yeah. No, yeah. when, when Rory McIlroy looks at a golf ball, he sees a basketball. When I look at a golf ball, <laughs> yeah. I, right, golf right. ball I, I see it. So a do team. I. No, I'm just <laughs> yeah, <seriously>. yeah. <laughs> right. right. Um, and so it sounds like what you're saying uh, is one of our core values. You know, the sports, uh, this Ireland rugby team uh, was able to, to look outside themselves, right? And truly just see people as people, which is one of our core values. And sports does this great thing Absolutely. to allow us to see people as people. And so I, I want to move into... Uh, some, uh, you know, after your retirement, we talked about sports, but let's talk about after your retirement. Since your retirement from rugby, um, you've combined your your legal work with coaching stints, like at uh, Ballymena and a role of uh, as a committee member of the Irish Rugby Football Union. Um, and I think in 2006, you were appointed as a member of the Northern Ireland Policing Board. Uh, and to top that, of course, uh, as we mentioned before, you've been active with Peace Players International for roughly about 15 years, and I think that's absolutely uh, dynamic. And and for those of you at home who mm-hmm. don't quite get what we're talking about yet or and are unfamiliar about the work that peace players is doing in northern ireland we are devoted to bridging the divide between catholics and protestants in belfast by tr- using the transformative power of sport to promote peace and unity yeah. uh, we, we provide a rare opportunity for catholic and protestant youth to form friendships and advocate for reconciliation and a shared society something that i know trevor you're very passionate about and i say all that to say this um, peace players, um, the, the Irish rugby team and, and Ireland uh, are all prime examples of the power sport has to create positive 
shared experience, uh, a shared experience that can bring people together despite differences. Uh, it can create spaces for people to see and learn from others that are different from themselves, both on and off the court or the pitch. <laughs> I'm interested uh, to know if, uh, if sports has impacted you in a different way. Like before you were on the Ireland um, team, did you, uh, did you know about this, the, the power of sports or was it your exposure on the Ireland team? Was it your exposure from peace players that made you think, oh, wow, sports is pretty phenomenal. It can and change and shift uh, the perspective and views of our people question. here in our society. Good question. But I, I think the, the, you know, sport has always been part of my life. My grandfather was heavily into sport. My father was heavily into sport when right. the Sinbin was introduced into hockey in Ireland. Mm -hmm. My my father was the first person ever into the sin bin, um, and uh, but um, but I've always enjoyed all sports. And you know, as I say about sport, it teaches you how to compete without destroying a relationship. It teaches you it, it teaches you how to, how to hate without actually hating um, mm -hmm. in that competitive world. But people involved in sport, if you give a coach a child, it says, "How do I develop that child? How do I help that child achieve?" in all sorts of ways. And it's not just on the sporting field, it's achieving as a person, the values it can put into people, the, the sense of leadership, of decision-making, right. of confidence, um, you know, the, 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 and everybody could find a sport they can't be good at. You know, the, there's there's such a broad range of sports and people can achieve that. And you, you look at the Paralympics and the Special Olympics, you know, and it's fantastic seeing some of those events and and the, the what people, what the young people competing get out of it. And, you know, and then when, when it comes to dealing with issues, if you throw a problem to a sports person, they immediately try to find a way of working through that problem. And so we've had the sport as a big influence in Ireland. And we have the three main sports, which are rugby, um, rugby, football and Gaelic sports, which is an Irish sport. And they're working together more and more, bringing, creating opportunities to bring young people together. Uh, to build the sort of relationships that, that that we all value, and and then peace players, it works at the interfaces, the the points where there are the divisions and the most difficult of the relationships, and and it's community relations using sport. It's not, and it's the as you know, it's the Chewy brothers, Brendan and Sean, who who developed it right, and right. The fantastic work that, that that they've done and and what they've given to certainly our society and other parts of the world. We're so grateful for it, and. And it, it, it's such a simple way of giving people an opportunity to show that they want the future to be different. And the parents let their children take part in these things. And the community workers let this happen. So, so it, it's, and the teachers show leadership. So it's leadership at a whole lot of different levels. Right. And, and then suddenly you have kids mixing and everybody says, you can't do that. And, <laughs> right. and right. our vice chair, um, who's going to take over his chair in, in Northern Ireland is, a guy called Jim Fitzpatrick. Jim works for, for one of the local television stations. And he went up to see some of the work that we were doing because he didn't believe it. And he thought he was going to do an expose on, on peace players. Right. That this is not, this, these two schools couldn't be coming together in the way that they are. These kids couldn't be mixing in the way that they are. So he went up with a very cynical eye and he's now on our board. And he suddenly recognized this is actually genuine. And it is actually something that does make a difference. So it's quite an interesting story that he went up, first of all, because he thought this this can't be happening. Yeah. And he suddenly realized it actually is happening. And some of the difficulties is getting those good news stories out and telling people this this this, this is happening and this can be done. And, and you look at where you were 20 years ago and to where you are now uh, and all that work that's gone in and it, it has made a significant, a significant difference. And so sport, it, it, it works in so many different ways. Absolutely, um, and uh, and we we appreciate that in peace players. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like Cyprus, yeah. Israel, you know, South Africa. Yeah, the benefits it yeah, can yeah. bring, and Middle East. you know, yeah. and the world needs it. As yeah, well. the world does absolutely, yeah. and I and I appreciate that answer. And I know we don't have that much time left, but I do have a couple more questions that I'd like to ask. And I I, I read earlier about your your accolades, and I mentioned the the Arthur Ashe uh, Courage Award that you guys won back in two thousand seven. You won 
on behalf of Peace Players. Um, and additionally, which is, this is actually great news, in June, you were appointed the UK's first special envoy to the United States on Northern Ireland. And you made some pretty strong comments. And I, I wanna highlight those comments. Um, I don't wanna spend too much time, but I, I do wanna highlight those comments. And I want uh, our, our, our listeners to hear it. Uh, you said, I want great relations across this island and between these islands. I want this place to be a successful, so socially and economically. I care about all of our children, no matter what their background or their political perspective or anything. The question is that we know that you love this work, but I want to know why. And also maybe give us a, a glimpse into uh, why you were nominated for the ESPY award. Well, I suppose dealing with the ESPY, you know, it was a real honor for, for Dave and I to be selected to go and receive it on behalf of the work of the Chewies and Peace Players as, as a whole. And I think why we were chosen was because we reflected in some ways the division in our society. Um, Dave would have probably been seen to come from a nationalist or stroke Republican background, and I would have been coming from uh, a unionist, pro-union background. And, nice. and so we were prepared to work together nice. uh, to help others work together to sort of say whatever our constitutional preference in the future, he would have preferred a United Ireland, I would have preferred a Northern Ireland to remain part of the United Kingdom. But right. both of us were committed to a united people. And you don't need constitutional change to be a united people because rugby shows that you can unite people across the island, even if constitutionally you, right. you remain apart. Right. But it is about that building that relationship. And, and I suppose, so we, we were very honoured. It was an amazing occasion. And thanks to the ESPYs because it, it not only, you know, it, it profiled the work that we were involved in. And, uh, and I think that's important. And, yeah. Yeah. and I think all the sports people in, in, the, in the room that night, you know, they, they show leadership at many <clears throat> different levels. They show encouragement and inspiration. Yeah. So many young people from all sorts of backgrounds and the power of sport that we talked about earlier is, is, is so great. Yeah. And then my, my, my role as US Envoy is, is really that, uh, as I was saying earlier, we, we signed an agreement in 1998, which people committed to, to say, let's make sure if we got relationships wrong in the past, let's get them right in the future. Right. And that, that agreement is working and yeah. it's we're, we're reaching a balance in our society in Northern Ireland that is actually quite a good place. And our young people are increasingly getting on with each other. The difficulties that we have in the past are, are being overcome and there are examples of how they, they can be overcome. Our economy is, is doing well we're, um, and we're, we're having companies coming here and investing in in, in Northern Ireland and they're, they're having a good experience, the quality of the people, the friendliness of the peoples, which yeah. might seem a wee bit strange. Um, and the true character of the people is, is coming out. As, as I say, that if I ever look to the true character of the people here, it um, if we go back to the tsunami that happened in the early 2000s in the Indian Ocean, mm. and every Christmas, and it, it happened on the Boxing Day, uh, and every Christmas, it's for two weeks before Christmas, there's a cathedral in Belfast and the dean would sit outside and raise money in a wooden barrel for charities. And the two weeks up to Christmas that year, £120,000 went into that wooden barrel from the people of Belfast. Wow. On Boxing Day, oh, yeah. the day after Christmas, yeah. the tsunami happened wow. in the Indian Ocean. Right. And the dean decided right. to keep the wooden barrel open. And the two weeks after Christmas, £1.2 million pounds Wow. was put into yeah. that barrel by the people of Belfast. And so yeah. that's the true character of the people here. And, and that's yeah. there to be, to be brought out. And so it, as, as my position of envoy, I'm saying to people, things are working here. And we appreciate the support that the US has given us in the past. They've been very yeah. good about yeah. helping us move on in so many ways. And it's just to continue. It's, it's, it's steady as she goes and constructive evolution. Yeah. We have accepted some very difficult things um, and it would be shame to waste that, that what I would call grace that's been shown by many in our society who have, despite the terrible tra tragedy that happened to them, have stayed quiet to enable our society to, to, uh, to move away from the violence to where we are now. And, yeah. and I think I'm coming to the U S really to, 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 um, say that that um to tell that positive story and, and i think it's a positive story that needs to be told to other parts of the world but it is that message as well it doesn't just happen it needs constant work yeah, um, yeah. 
but that's okay. And a lot of people here want to do that. And yeah. And the reasons why I do it are probably just that I'm from a police family. And if I ever get, uh, if I ever get tired, I just, I just think that those police officers had to do those over 300 of them were killed and thousands of them injured. And so uh, for me, just to give a bit of time up to do what I'm doing is not very much. So those are probably the, the, the motivations. Um, yeah. And I'm now a granda as well. So I'm a grandfather to, to two young Very nice. Yeah. Boy. That would be a, a good motivation there. And Definitely. they're living here. So that's a good motivation for the future. Right. Right. Trevor, you look too young to be a grandpa. I know. Uh, yeah, I know. Um, so first of all, that's Very a, high a mileage, phenomenal yeah. answer. <laughs> a phenomenal answer. Thank you for sharing that. And I, I don't know if you have uh, time for one more question, but if yeah. you allow me to be a bit philosophical, both Trevor and Emmett, uh, with this last piece here, it's it's uh, it's quite clear that we all believe that sport uh, to be the true uh, vehicle for change amongst just uh, nations. And so I know that sport has the power to heal. Uh, it has the power to bring people together. It has the power to provide spaces for people to find comfort in what Emmett would say, uncomfortable conversations mm -hmm. that anywhere else would create enemies or even more. Uh, sport is all encompassing and doesn't care about the color of your skin or your socioeconomic status uh, or where you come from or what religion you practice. And that is truly the most powerful thing. And Trevor, you've embodied that in this whole conversation that we've had. And I'm interested, and this is the last question, um, uh, to know what type of impact you think sports will have on the world uh, in the future and how the work at Peace Players aligns with that foreseeable impact. This is kind of the, the glimmer of hope that you're leaving uh, young uh, Catholic and Protestant youth, um, that wisdom that you're gonna be imparting on them yeah. about just the work that can be done through sport to bridge the divide. Well, I, th I think the key thing for peace players is that it's community relations using sport. And, you know, the work of Gareth Harper, our managing director here, and all his team and the other teams Shout around out to the, Gareth. The, yeah, <laughs> the other teams around the globe. And, and, and what they do is they have those uncomfortable conversations and they challenge the stereotypes. And so it's not just about throwing a ball to children and, and say, right, go and play together. It's actually about deepening the relationship and digging into the issues. Absolutely. And helping to shape them and help them deal with the sort of problems that they might come across and developing yeah. young leaders all over the place who will show a different way. And I think that is really key work. And that work could be done in so many places around the world. Uh, right. because it's needed in so many of those places. Right. And and the, the power of sport is, is that it's the impact that young people look up the sports people, they look at what they do and they can draw so much out of, out of this, the top sports people and, and the images they put forward. And, and, and it, it can be a very powerful, positive tool in the world. And I think sport maybe doesn't fully appreciate the impact it can have, but, but through the likes of Laureus and others, I think that it's it it's trying to actually channel that that potential power and influence in a, such a constructive way to maximize the, the difference it can make in so many different areas in, in which it's it is needed. Um, and you know, around the world we have fantastic examples of of top sports people giving up their time freely to support the work that's going on on the ground right. because it's on the ground as well. It's the coaches, the ordinary people who, you know, who take young people, whether it's drugs or whether it's social issues, and actually try to mentor those young people and, and try to put the values into them that we see that sport can bring out, those good values. And, and so, you know, we had Marcus Rashford, uh, a footballer over here, talking about, about the fact of, um, you know, the food problems for, for families and at poverty levels. And he made a massive impact just by him taking on that, 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 that challenge and, and highlighting the problems that were there and, and people respond. So for all our top sports people, um, they, 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 can, they can have a huge influence. And, right. and I think if we need to ask them, we need to give them the opportunities to show that sort of leadership and, and give the sort of encouragement that, that we want. You know, Rory McIlroy, you know, he, he raised thousands of pounds 
uh, right. for a cancer children's cancer unit oh, here. That's nice. You know, that's, that's uh, dynamic. so they have they have they have those uh, those values, and I think for us, what we can do is try and pull that all together and use it as much as we possibly can. And a lot of the top sports people are are quite prepared to give their time freely for those issues. So, mm. so. And it's, it is that counter dynamic to the other dynamic that's taking place in the world that we see. And, and as I say, you just have to have that counter dynamic constantly working because the conflict one is always working too and it needs the challenge. So there you have it. I love it. Um, there's always value in sport. We got to have the uh, we've got to have a story that speaks to evolving and changing people and that is through sports and so I, I really am happy to have had you today you're amazing thank yeah, you for taken, imparting your wisdom up on us yeah so much of thank your you time both. Trevor uh, yeah, yeah I'm so sorry thank you both we, you're great yeah. and, and you, you you're the next generation I'm I'm uh, past it no, <laughs> no, 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 you're still young no. and sprightly. Trevor, right. I yes, can tell. I can tell. yes, yes. Yeah. I'm sure you wake up every day and do a, a strong workout. <laughs> it was a golden rule of sport. It was uh, one day a proud cockerel, next day a feather duster. So <laughs> you, you enjoy the moments when you're at the top. And then the American golfer Lee Trevino always had a great quote as well. He says, The older I get, the better I was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, right. Then, you know, I don't know. A feather duster cool. doesn't sound too bad. That's all. No, that's that's feather duster good. Yeah, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Trevor. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you all for listening and joining us on this magnificent journey. Like I always say, if you like what you heard, we encourage you to like and subscribe. We've got so many more brilliant and amazing conversations and stories to share in the coming weeks. Like one of our shares and reviews below. Like. Ogo N, who says, love every episode, love this podcast, always super insightful, leaves me anticipating the next episode. Ogo N, wherever you are, we yeah. appreciate the review and the Thank love. You. Yeah. You know, we try, we do try our best. Emmett, mm -hmm. your I, thoughts. I, I'm sweating and you're sweating as well. We try our <laughs> yeah. very best in all of these episodes. Um, yeah. Trevor what a awesome. great guy. He was yeah. an amazing guy. He had great yeah. anecdotes. And it's just like you could see the clear pictures and all of his answers about everything he was yeah. saying. A lot of it was super, yeah. you know, obviously pretty traumatic to hear. But I think, yeah. like I always say, you have to go through that trauma in order to heal for the first That's part correct, of things. That's correct, right? So, you know where you came from. You know um, you I, I, I really applaud him for everything he's done and continues to do. Mm -hmm. um, but that being said, people, if you like what you heard or you want to hear more, Try visiting us at our website at www.peaceplayers.org or following us on social media, mostly at Peace Players International. We're talking Facebook. We're talking <laughs> Twitter. We're right. talking Instagram. Right. We're talking LinkedIn. We're talking right. YouTube. We're talking Tumblr, Snapchat, TikTok. <laughs> Just kidding. Those last all three, of it, all of it. we don't have those. Right. We don't right. have those. Can't find it right. on, on right. any of those social medias. But... <laughs> Don't forget to leave uh, a comment or a review in the YouTube channel or on Apple Podcasts. Rate five stars. Only we only accept five star yeah, reviews. Only, that's only, that's not our. So that's not know. our. This is just a rule that we have. It's not. It's, a, <laughs> it's out of our control, really. But it really helps with our algorithm. Uh, so leave a review. Leave a five star rating. And uh, Chinny, I gotta <clears throat> crack my neck. Crack it. Go lay crack down it. and look at the ceiling for the rest of the weekend. Not only just today, just the rest. Of